help, my agents are out of control. Why are there different ways to create projects in Azure AI Foundry? How do I know my RAG system isn't missing anything important? We're going to answer all of these questions in this episode of Context Window. Hello everyone, and in case you're new here, which is everyone because this is the first episode of Context Window, Context Window is a show where we answer three questions from the Azure AI Foundry community via Discord and GitHub in hopes to help you on your AI building journey. Anyone can join this community at this lovely link and you can find all the resources we talk about in this episode there as well. To stick around to the end for a bit of AI trivia. Anyways, these questions aren't going to answer themselves. So let's get started. So the first question is from this Discord user is asking if there's a way to control your AI agent's behavior beyond the initial instructions that you give it when you're creating it. Well, if you've ever been a kid before, you know you didn't always listen the first time your parents tell you to do something. And I'm definitely not saying AI agents are kids, but they do share some similarities because even if we give them the best instructions at the start, they can get distracted when trying to complete the task we ask them to do. This can be things like having two similar tools, both in the name of those tools and the functions of what they do for the agent to choose from, which may cause them to select the wrong one or working with long chat histories that may or may not have still have relevant information in them. Fortunately for us, when building AI agents, we don't need to go read a bunch of parenting books to find out how to improve the situation because we can use agentic frameworks like Semantic Kernel, which has features like the Chat History Summarization Reducer. What this does is allow us to create a summary of the chat history between a user and an agent up to a certain amount of message counts, which we can decide on. This helps the agent with better context management of the past as it grows, and which should lead to a better control and performance of the current interaction. Well, I hope this answers the question, and we will link to the relevant docs at the link below. And also, if you ha do have any parenting advice, drop a comment below because I'm definitely looking for some. But let's get to question number two. So this next question is from a user wondering the differences between creating a Foundry project and a hub-based project when using Azure AI Foundry. See, projects are the key to unlocking resources models and services that you need to start building with Azure AI Foundry. But while most keys look the same, they don't all work on the same door because then why would you need a key, right? The different kind of projects work the same way. A Foundry project gives you a simple access to models, evaluations, agents, and playgrounds. Think of it like your own studio apartment that you decided to decorate with the latest and greatest AI models, because why not? Hub-based projects, on the other hand, allow for administrative control and shared resources when working within an organization. So you as an individual can create projects from your organization's hub and share their resources across the organization. You can think of this like sharing an apartment with friends where each of you have your own room, like a project, but you do share a kitchen together. Which reminds me, I need to do the dishes after this. There are some more differences between the two types of projects in terms of access to certain services, so you can find more information at the link below. But before I start cleaning, we have one more question and the long awaited trivia question to come. So this last question is about building a RAG system and wanting to make sure that the indexer is going through all the documents to achieve the most relevant. This is a great question because we don't want a RAG system that doesn't look at all the documents to present the best answer. That is like someone saying there's a trivia question coming at the end of the, the video and then not showing it. Not good, not good at all. So there's four ways we can make some quick improvements to make sure all relevant documents are considered. The first is to enhance the metadata and titles of the documents. If all your documents are called untitled document or final version for real this time one, it will be hard to understand the content of the document. And of course, these are extreme examples. But the main lesson is to be descriptive as possible. Speaking of descriptions, tip number two is to add short descriptions at the start of each document that is a short summary of the documents or even things like a table of content. Now, everything I just suggested assumes you have the ability to change the documents. 
you're working with. But that's not always the case. And for those cases, you can create an external mapping file in a structured format like JSON or CSV that maps the title of the documents with the descriptions of the documents. And lastly, tip number four is experimenting with something like semantic ranking, which is available in Azure AI Search. This allows for better quality of retrieval. I hope that helps. And you can find code samples that implement these concepts at the link below. But now is the time you've all been waiting for the time to retrieve our AI trivia question for this week. Since this is the first episode, I'm going to start with a bit of an easier one. We talked about retrieval augmented generation, which was first introduced in a research paper. What is the full title of that paper? Post your answers in our dedicated Discord channel along with any follow-up questions you have about any of the topics that we covered in this episode. Where? You guessed it, at the link below. Well, it's time to close this edition of Context Window. But since this is our first try at this, let us know in the comments or the Discord what you liked, didn't like, or want to see more of. See you next week.